Hello everyone and welcome to IVSA Bather's official YouTube channel Pashuwani. Pashuwani is a platform that provides you with veterinary education. Our video series consists of practical relevant lecture videos, field approach clinical aspects, guide and tip for future careers, smart content related to both animal and veterinary science. We believe sharing is caring so please like, comment and subscribe for further updates. And now Let's welcome our speaker of today's episode of Saturday's Sharing. Today's my topic of presentation is that is zoo toxins and their management in the veterinary practice. And uh, important thing uh, but, uh, regarding this particular top, uh, topic is that is particularly that is uh, toxicology and this is where actually the veterinarian's role is very much important and this is the testing period for the veterinarians that's the treatment of the poisoning conditions and when you think of about this toxicity or this poisoning conditions among this the this is one of the important thing and this is the routine uh, thing that's occurring in the field condition and their management is very much important okay and when we talk of this zoo toxins that's mainly that uh, thing that comes to in our mind is that's the uh, snake poisoning Either it's a scorpion poisoning or even by the that's a spider poisoning that's a bite by the spiders or even by the toads okay these are the important things which will uh, which let's discuss uh, in due course of time regarding this zootoxins okay and basically that the definition of zootoxins is these are the poisonous substances that means uh, which are produced by the either specific types of the animals that can induce harmful effects during the exposure to tissues that means either by to bite or through sting that will cause the toxicity and these poisonous animals are widely distributed throughout the animal kingdom and there are specifically more than 3500 uh, different types of snakes will be there and among these more than 400 snakes are very much poisonous okay and coming to this uh, specifically for the snake poisoning there are majorly there are four types of snakes which are called as big four snakes and these are poisonous snakes that's the first is the cobra that's a naja naja and common crate russell swiper and also echis carnitas these are the four types of snakes uh, which are highly poisonous and uh, if we won't treat the animal in the uh, correct time or in the soon after bite uh, death is the end criteria that will happen among these poisonous conditions okay that's what that's uh, commonly these four types of snakes are called as big four snakes okay and coming to identification of snakes is very much important and that's a naja naja that's a cobra it's easily identified by its hood whereas the crate will be identified by the uh, majorly pair type of white pants in the body okay and russell piper uh, which is the key identification feature for this russell piper is the black edged almond or uh, there's a chain shaped marks on the back of the a uh, <coughs> snake and uh, which is visible clearly visible in this particular picture and it's the hemotoxic venom but also sometimes it also produces the neurotoxicity whereas this cobra this particularly it's a neurotoxic uh, it, it will induce the neurotoxicity cobra okay and coming to pit viper this also hemotoxic that means it causes it cardiotoxicity okay hemotoxic venom causes even the renal failure uh, uh, during the late onset of n venoming okay and snake bite incidents coming to snake bite incidences uh, and india is the it's a prone country for the snake bite by looking at this picture one can clearly identify there's a more than lack uh, any venoming cases that will occur in the uh, india and <coughs> coming to that's a job really. and whereas deaths that's a snake bite deaths more than 10000 deaths will occur in india and this is the what you can that's a, it's a, uh, india is the prone country for the snake bites okay and also snake deaths there's a one beautiful uh, what you call that's a recording that will be prepared by this that's a bbc that's a very very beautiful document has been prepared regarding the snake bites uh, specifically for the cobra they have prepared and it's available in the youtube also that's a bbc documentary if you just type that's a bbc documentary regarding snake bites in the india you'll get a uh, in detail information Information regarding this snake bites in the India okay and among these for this zoo toxins this venomous apparatus is very much important okay venomous snakes have a pair type of teeth that's called as the this uh, endless teeth those will be called as fangs okay and with the with which the uh, this uh, venom is injected into the body okay which are present at the front of their upper jaw these fangs contain a venom channel or a groove along which the venom can be that's a venom can be introduced deep into the tissues of their natural prey whenever they bite or uh, they will uh, just attack the animal okay there are sharp these are very sharp okay these are short sharp erect fangs fangs are nothing but the poisonous teeth that's present in the animal okay and 
how to differentiate the whether it's a poisonous snake or non poisonous this is very much important depending on the bite uh, site also by looking at the bite site we can differentiate the whether it's a poisonous snake or the uh, bite will be whether by the poisonous snake or by the non poisonous snake okay and if at all if uh, any time if you visited this uh, hyderabad zoo that's uh, uh, zoological nehru zoological garden in the hyderabad okay uh, they have displayed one beautiful picture okay how to differentiate this one snake garden is there in that garden they have mentioned how to differentiate uh, between the poisonous snakes and by the non poisonous snake either by the depending on the hood or depending on the scales on the body okay you can differentiate the between poisonous snakes and the non poisonous snake among all these snakes okay crate is highly poisonous but uh, naturally what we call that's a uh, uh, cobra will be poisonous but the when it come, when it comes to the amount of poison okay amount of poison or the amount of venom it's injected it's a very very less in the crate whereas it will be little bit higher in the uh, that's a cobra bite okay okay as such what we call that's a crate bite will be it's a highly poisonous and death will be result okay uh, it, it will result and it will be highly hemotoxic in nature also there are so many types how to differentiate between the there are so many uh, by looking at this picture one can tell how to differentiate between poisonous and non poisonous snake okay depending on the head shape that's a hood whether it's a triangle shape or it will be round shape depending on the pupil also okay whether it's elliptical pupil or round pupil and the anal plates okay uh, it will be usually in the non poisonous snake it will be double row of the subcaudal plates will be seen during the anal area where it will be single row will be seen in the poisonous snake okay and even the poisonous snake will be having a very a triangle shaped head or hood okay and the pupil will be usually elliptical in the poisonous snake okay and depending on the uh, fang marks fang marks also you can differentiate whether it's a poisonous snake or non poisonous snake okay uh, usually what will happen uh, uh, fang marks will be it's a uh, very feeble what so what you can do, it's uh, it's not clearly visible in the poisonous snake bite fang marks whereas there will be clear cut two rows of the marks of the teeth will be visible in the poisonous uh, that's non poisonous snake bite that means uh, if the fang marks are not clear also you can just think of uh, it may be because of the poisonous snake bite okay there are different uh, features also along this uh, how to differentiate between the poisonous snake and the non poisonous snake along with this okay and coming to this composition of the snake venom uh, uh, it it's uh, actually a combination of the contents which will be uh, which will contribute for the the snake venom it will be having either fibrinolysins proteolysins neurotoxins specifically this uh, cobra venom it will be having it's having neurotoxicity choline stresses okay that's what for most of the snake biting even in the movies you can see that's whenever that's cobra bites what you can observe there is a froth from the either from the um, uh, animal or from the human mouth what you can observe there is a froth okay that's nothing uh, nothing the, the, that's mainly because of the cold stresses okay that's inhibition of the presence of the cold stresses which uh, inhibit this astral cold stress there will be increased astral cold activity and because of that there will be even this muscular activity and nicotinic activity will be increased in the body and some of the even this uh, venom will be also having hemolysins okay thromboplastin agglutinin that will be cardiotoxins which is responsible actually for the death of the animal hyaluronidase okay that is responsible for the tissue destruction at the uh, bite site okay and usually this cobra this belongs to elapida family okay this will be having a major uh, composition as a venom that's astral colony stress okay astral colony stress it will be having uh, <coughs> and neuro, that's uh, basically it's a neurotoxin okay apart from this it's also having a hyaluronidase and it is responsible for the tissue distrib uh, tissue destruction okay phospholipase a2 phosphodiesterase okay and this is a neurotoxic in nature causes the flaccid paralysis whereas wipers that's uh, either pit wiper or russell wiper they mainly these will be either hemotoxic causes the cardiovascular collapse and even it also causes the nephrotoxicity contains the mainly the enzyme this is a proteolytic enzymes apart from this this is also having a phospholipase a2 phosphodiesterase and even the collagenase okay depending on the fang marks also that's already we have discussed how to differentiate between the whether it's a poisonous snake bite or the non poisonous snake bite the first major thing what you have to follow whenever there's any bite with the any venomous animal first thing is that what you have to follow that's a, you should not excite the animal that's the first and foremost thing what you have to follow okay you should not uh, excite the animal okay sufficient aeration should be there okay 
and should be treated in situ okay and tourniquet that's a still questionable whether you have to apply tourniquet or not okay it should be applied only in case of the whenever you uh, know the definite cause of the bite that's a, it's only the because of the cobra bite then you can apply the tourniquet okay otherwise you should not or you need not apply the tourniquet okay that too should be tied loosely and it should be released frequently and the best thing is you have to wash with the mild soap water or clean water okay if uh, soap water is not available you can apply the you can use the clean water for the washing of the uh, bite site okay otherwise you can use mild soap but you should not use the irritants okay for the it will aggregate the aggravate the condition do not use antiseptic okay or uh, potassium permanent solution okay ice pack ice uh, even sometimes we can see they, there's a practice that they will be they will be using this ice pack that the bite site but it's a contraindicated in the wiper bite okay and even we can uh, there's a very old practice what we have to do what we are doing uh, since years there's a exercising the bite bitten part okay uh, to bleed that particular area without any causing the excitement okay that's the first thing what uh, usually what we call that's a do it right that's a right means it's a reassure the patient that means uh, first you have to calm down the patient that's the first thing what you have to uh, do in the bite cases second you have to immobilize the animal okay next you have to uh, soon you have to take uh, uh, rush to the hospital or you have to take to the hospital for the better veterinary care and you have to tell the doctor what exactly the symptoms you observed in the animal it may be either tosis or it may be other symptoms what you observe during the uh, in the animal okay usually that's what i have told whenever we think of that's a which which snake is poisonous usually the immediate answer what you get is the, that's a cobra is the most poisonous snake but uh, by looking at this picture one can that's a slide one can tell the quantity the quantity inject the amount of the poison that's are the quantity of the poison that's injected by the cobra is around 200 milligram per bite approximately whereas the cobra whereas the crate it injects only the 20 milligram uh, per bite okay and lethal dose also lethal dose it will be around 68 milligram uh, for the crate whereas it will be around 12 to 15 milligram for the cobra okay by looking at this slide one can tell that the crate is much more poisonous but thing is that most of the time what will happen uh, by looking at the cobra itself okay by looking at the cobra itself uh, whenever uh, and the patient himself whenever are the animal uh, what will uh, specifically in the human practice what will happen whenever they fi find this particular cobra and they will get excited themselves and the death is mainly because of the excitedness what they uh, what actually that will occur okay but thing is uh, when you think of this lethal dose or the discharge bite discharge of the venom per bite it will be great will inject very less venom whereas this cobra will inject up to 200 milligram whereas this russell wiper it also indi uh, injects a very uh, high quantity it will be around uh, 150 milligram and the lethal dose it varies from the 15 to 20 milligram okay Coming to the objectives of this treatment, there are three years what we have to follow. That's the first is the antivenom therapy. Specifically, most of the time what is available is the polyvenom. Polyvenom therapy what we practice routinely in the clinics. Okay. Next is the antibiotics and the anti-tetanus serum. Okay. That means triple A, antivenom therapy, antibiotic therapy and anti-tetanus therapy. And one more thing, do not use antihistamine. Okay. That will further aggravate the condition or the worsen the condition. It will further make the animal... Uh, it will further it will act as a CNS depressant and it will further aggravate the condition. Therefore, one should not use antihistamines during the treatment of snake poisoning. Okay. Therapeutic care mostly uh, that's uh, specifically for the wiper bite because it's a hemotoxic and it's a cardiotoxic. We have to use the cardiovascular support, we have to follow, and we are using most of the time that's a vitamin K1 uh, as a uh, <coughs> anticoagulant, uh, and this uh, usually it will mix with the one in thousand adrenaline. And most of the time, uh, even this corticosteroid therapy, that's also questionable whether you have to use corticosteroids or not, okay. Uh, <coughs> even sometimes blood transfusion, it will be carried, but it's a very rare practice, okay. But fluid therapy, one can carry out. And usually, this antivenom, it's available most of the time in the uh, hospitals or in the uh, uh, pharmacies, that's usually polyvalent antivenom, okay. That should be injected intravenous. That's a slow IV at the rate of 100 ml for the large animals or even for the 10 to 15 ml, 50 ml for the small animals, okay. And this polyvalent, uh, that's an antivenom shelf life will be around 3 years and which should be kept at 2 to 8 degrees. That's at the refrigeration temperature should be kept and it should be administered with 1 in 1000 epinephrine. Usually 0.5 to 1 ml subcutaneous, this epinephrine will be injected to avoid shock, okay. That means a maximum 100 ml can be administered, this antivenom can be administered to the large ml whereas up to 10 to 50 ml can be admitted to the small animals like dogs and cats up apply 
वन टू टी एम एल एंटीवेन एट दि बिटन सैट दट्स ओवर दि वोट वेर एवर दट्स फैंग मार्क्स अकर् आर वेन एवर दट्स बिटन सैट विल बेर टू दट वी कैन अल्लाई ईवन दिस एंटीवेन टोपिकली वन टू टू एम एल दि एंटीवेन कैन भी अल्लाइड एंड मॉनिटर फार दि कार्डियोस्ल एक्टिविटी दट्स वेरी मच इंपार्टेंट ओके एंड एनालिसिक स्पेसिफिकली दिस नार्कोटिक एनालिसिक शुड भी कैन भी रेकमेंडेड इन केस ऑफ कोब्रोवाइड टू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट द इंट्रेंस पेन देर विल लाइक ओपेट्स ओपेट्स वी कैन यूज ड्यूरिंग बिकॉज देर विल बी सीवियर पेन देर विल बी सीवियर इचिंग आर इंटेंस पेन विल बी देर ड्यूरिंग कोब्रोवाइड टू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दैट पेन वी कैन यूज इवन दिस नार्कोटिक एनालिसिक्स एंड एपिनेफ्रेंट कार्टिकोस्टोराइड्स कैन भी यूज स्पेसिफिकली टू अवॉइड शॉक टू अवॉइड शॉक एंड टू ओवरकम दिस हाइपोटेंशन ओके and postmortem findings in the animals okay uh, whenever they will come up with any snake bite okay there will be uh, punctures of the there's a fang marks can be seen but it's not always visible okay soon after the bite that's visible but whenever the uh, period it lapses then it's very difficult to find this even fang marks also okay swelling will be there at the bitten site ecmotic hemorrhage will occur and even sometimes hematoma will occur okay and uh, intracerebral hemorrhage there's overall overall in the body there will be hemorrhage will be occur during uh, that's the most of the commonest finding in the postmortem finding okay there are different signs or species uh, with the uh, what type of species of the snake it has bitten this uh, signs and symptoms it will be vary and uh, one more important thing what you have to think of is presence of uh, most of the time most of the veterinarians will be asking where exactly this anti venom is available or anti snake venom is available and what are all these uh, companies they are producing this anti snake venom this is a very much important slide because uh, what we call such drugs in the pharmacology there's a uh, orphan drugs orphan drugs means the drugs uh, for which no pharmaceutical company or very few pharmaceutical company will come forward to produce or manufacture such class of drugs because the market is very much less for such class of compounds so that's the orphan drugs but thing is that these are the essential drugs these are life saving drugs uh, for example paracetamol there are uh, uh, hundreds or thousands of companies will manufacture paracetamol whereas the, you know, to manufacture this uh, antivenom there hardly we can count that's around 5 to 10 companies uh, or pharma and uh, pharma companies they are manufacturing this uh, Anti venom, because thing is that uh, how many uh, the the sort how many of uh, of us will come up with the uh, fever, uh, whereas uh, that means uh, everyone will be having a chance of coming with the uh, having the fever, but but how many of us will be having a chance of snake bite? That's a very rare practice. Therefore, uh, so preparation of such uh, drugs will be and such drugs will be called as orphan drugs, and <coughs> no company will come forward to manufacture such class of drugs. Uh, in such condition the government will take upper hand and it will interfere it will give the marketing monopoly for such class of compounds or they will even this uh, what you call that uh, they will provide subsidy okay usually there's a central research institute that's present in the kasoli himachal pradesh that's one of the uh, in a company that's manufacturing uh, this uh, one of the sector that's manufacturing this uh, <coughs> and twin and uh, there's a very old institute is hafkin institute hafkin institute located in the mumbai uh, there's also will manufacture this uh, these are the public sectors public sectors include labs include there's a uh, central research institute hafkin research institute and kings institute which is located in the uh, chennai kings research institute and the bengal chemicals and pharmaceuticals located in kolkata these are the uh, four important companies uh, Labs where they will manufacture the anti snake venom. Coming to private sector, it's mainly the Serum Institute of India, located in the Pune, and Wins Bio Products, located in Hyderabad, and Biological E Limited, that's uh, in the Hyderabad, and even the Bharat Serum and Vaccine Limited. These are the companies. That's the private sector companies which will manufacture this anti venom. Okay, and usually the, I already have told this will be having a uh, most of the time they will supply this polyvalent anti venom. and this will be having a combination combination of the antivenom which will be produced from the that's a naja naja that's a cobra okay which will uh, contribute around 0.6 mg uh, that varies uh, depending on the company it varies the composition of the antivenom it varies okay and this will be having a com uh, antivenom for the naja naja yakis carinatus and even this uh, bangaras uh, cerulis etc okay Uh, manufacture specifically this bio e limited what i have told us hyderabad and usually is available as a 10 ml injection okay approximate cost approximate cost it will be is from 570 to around 600 rupees okay next uh, one more institute that's called as the bharat serum institute okay that will also there's a uh, there's a private sector uh, which will uh, manufacture this anti venom okay and this is available as a 10 ml vial okay Uh, presentation is anti snake venom serum okay it's called as the anti snake venom serum 
and approximate cost varies up to 600 uh, rupees. Uh, this is uh, regarding snake poisoning. Next comes uh, scorpion poisoning. Okay, there are approximately more than 2000 species of the scorpions are there in the world. Okay, but only 75 uh, uh, species of the scorpions are clinically important and that induces the toxic. Okay, again, there are two types of Indian species that's the Mesobothus. Okay, which is also called as most commonly it's called as the red scorpion and one more is the black scorpion. These are the two things, uh, these are two scorpions which will. Uh, most of the time they will induce the toxicity or poisonous condition in the poisoning condition in the animals okay uh, for this compared to snakes here for the scorpions the venom will be present in the glands at the last tail segment and passes by a duct to a stringer okay at the end of the tail and the most potent venoms are uh, low molecular proteins that affect the means basically this nervous system okay uh, the nomenclature of these toxins or the venoms from the scorpion will be called into either it may be alpha toxins or the beta toxins okay that's a beautiful picture of the uh, red scorpion and it's the black scorpion which are the major two species which will be induced the toxicity in the animals okay and scorpion alpha toxins okay that will induce or it will cause a prolongation of the action potential uh, in the nerves and muscles by slowing down the inactivation of the sodium channel actually that's a pharmacological mechanism action and with receptor affinity depending on the membrane potential whereas beta toxins that will bind to receptor site distinct from that of the alpha toxins with binding being the independent of the voltage okay and coming to management of the scorpion toxicity it's mainly the it will induce mainly the controlling the autonomic dysfunction pain at the bite side that's very much important okay there will be intense pain at the bite side uh, the bitten side will be there that's a stingy where it actually it injects its poison as the venom okay there will be intense pain will be there uh, in the scorpion toxicity and uh, or scorpion poisoning and fluid management is also very much important and maintenance of the pulmonary edema clinically okay uh, autonomic dysfunction that will be controlled by using prozosin prozosin uh, uh, most of the time is alpha 1 blocker okay uh, that's available as a prozosin it's a trade name itself is a uh, <coughs> prozosin it's a alpha 1 adrenal receptor antagonist which controls the blood pressure and even the tachycardia okay it also contracts the vasoconstriction that will be in, that's a being induced by this uh, scorpion toxin and it's a most of the time it will act as a antidote okay it's not the exactly antidote but it's a similarly to the prozosin can be used even in the scorpion poisoning or the scorpion toxicity and also cardio protect this one more important advantage of this prozosin okay available as a score tablet are only one milligram or 2.5 milligram or even a five, uh, five milligram tablet and dosage for this uh, prozosin is around 30 microgram per kg body weight okay and one more important thing it's a look for the first dose effect or it's called as the first dose phenomena because it will induce the uh, because soon after injection what will happen there will be sudden uh, blood pressure one has to monitor there will be sudden drop in the blood pressure it will be okay because it's alpha 1 antagonist it will reduce the blood pressure therefore uh, the immediately soon after administration of this processing there will be first dose response or first dose effect will be there when if you monitor clearly then there will, there will not be problem with this either first dose effect or first dose phenomena okay uh, for uh, alleviating the pain okay there is a pain will be there this already I told it's intense pain will be there to counteract this pain even you can use benzodiazepines or if the severe pain is there you can use even NSAIDs uh, local ice packs can be applied or even if there's a severe irritation or itching will be there at the bitten side you can have even the lo uh, local anesthetics like xylocaine can be used okay uh, and <coughs> counter irritant also can be used and to prevent this neuromuscular blockade one can use streptomycin and fluid management is very much important this scorpion poisoning and administer lots of oral fluids and parental you can use this uh, uh, normal saline or the uh, dextrose normal saline can be used and to counteract this pulmonary edema uh, this is uh, one of the mainly because the pulmonary dis uh, dysfunction this pulmonary edema is very much common we can use either dopamine and even already we are told that's a prozosin also can be used okay next one should not use that's uh, <coughs> steroids one should not use steroids in the uh, <coughs> scorpion poisoning or scorpion toxicity okay and this uh, anti scorpion venom is also available anti scorpion venom basically it's uh, been manufactured by this Hopkins institute that's located in the mumbai okay it contains the uh, uh, that's called as the scorpion venom anti serum okay produced from the equine globulin uh, manufactured by the Hopkins institute mumbai 
and it's available as a powder for injection on and one vial cost approximately 350 to 400 rupees and it neutralizes one ml anti serum neutralizes one milligram of the butaswinum okay uh, <coughs> for adults uh, it's also used iv initially three vials otherwise you can repeat the injection after 60 minutes and coming to one more toxicity there's a very small chapter that's uh, called as the spider poisoning okay uh, most of the time it will induce the anaphylactic type of responses spider poisoning at the bitten site okay uh, basically because this toxic principle are venom contains the protein which includes the protease or hyaluronidase or even the sphingomyelinase they also affect they are the, having direct lytic effect on the rbc's okay the most venomous spider that's seen in the uh, usually uh, in any part of the country or in any area is the brown recluse brown recluse spider that's also called as loxus cholesterolosa and even the black widow spider that's the latrodectus mactans and most commonly what you can observe is the black widow spider that's the latrodectus mactans okay this is the picture of this uh, brown recluse spider and this is a uh, black widow spider and spiderinum that's what uh, even it can kill a mouse at a dose of 0.0 to 0.06 milligram okay and it's basically it made up of already told this is basically it made it's made up of proteins that affect the transmission of the calcium ions in the nervous system and there is no actually exact treatment for this uh, uh, spider poisoning okay and one more important thing what you can observe the symptoms is there's a profuse sweating or muscle cramps okay muscle cramps sweating sweating will be observed it mainly because of the decreased blood pressure okay and most of the time there will be it will induce the cytotoxicity to the endothelial size okay this triggers the intravascular coagulation and it also it will result to microthrombi formation within the capillaries therefore there will be capillary occlusion will be sent hemorrhage and even the necrosis can occur okay uh, this brown lecluse bite it uh, already told there's a venom it contains uh, there's a sphingomyelinase and dermonecrotic factor okay initially the bite will be painless but when the time prolongs as the time prolongs the again the, it will result into uh, much more pain okay and pruritus will be seen at the uh, bite site and most of the time it will resolve automatically on its own within few days but in severe cases even it can induce the erythema and it can also result into necrosis at that particular bitten site okay sometimes it also causes the fear like thing chills weakness okay nausea or vomiting can be seen rarely rarely it may induce hemoglobinuria or the renal failure treatment induce local cleansing that means you have to thoroughly wash the bitten area or bitten site okay cold compressors can be applied this ice pack can be applied okay analgesic can be used to relieve the pain or to alleviate the pain antihistamines can be used that's uh, one practice what routinely we can observe or we can follow in the spider poison that's a uh, antihistamines and you can also use tetanus vaccine okay actually there's an uh, anti-malarial duct that's a uh, dapson is there which can be also used uh, whenever there's a progression of the necrosis and coming to black widow spider there's a lactorectus mactans <coughs> which basically contains the alpha toxins okay uh, which binds to neurons and cause the depletion of the acetylcholine and also norepinephrine okay symptoms <coughs> uh, uh, it can resolve on their own whenever uh, uh, but uh, if it is a severe then only it causes the toxicity or even the venomation and uh, the locally whenever there is a bite by the black widow spider it will be unremarkable uh, the uh, the bitten area it may not be that much prominent in the bitten area rarely the systemic reactions can be seen and localized uh, sweating can be seen that's called as the localized diaphoresis okay steroids can be used to prevent the shock and uh, locally you can use this uh, analgesics or even the antihistaminics for the treatment of this uh, spider uh, venomation okay this is in brief regarding this uh, zootoxins either it may be snake poisoning or the scorpion poisoning or even the toxicity induced by the uh, <coughs> spiders okay if you are having any doubts or any uh, clarification you can call me with this number that's 9886485399 or even you can drop a mail for the drvinay573 at the rate okay 